What's up YouTube? In today's video I'm talking about the Detroit Pistons and what to expect from them this upcoming offseason, what they can do with their roster, and how to really be excited about this team going uh, going forward. Let's just uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, um, all that fun stuff. Comment, what do you think the Pistons should do with this offseason? Some rumors of who they could potentially get in restricted free agency, um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. For now, let's just jump right on into it. So let's go and talk about the restrict free agents uh, just really quickly because Marvin Bagley, uh, who the Pistons recently acquired from the Sacramento Kings, he's one of these restrict free agents. Now that means that the team could sign him to a deal, but the Pistons could match. I don't know if a team is willing to do that with Marvin Bagley. Um, he did thrive a little bit in Detroit to a degree. Um, and I think that him staying with Detroit is going to be a good thing for the team moving forward. And uh, we'll just kind of have to see what that means for um, the Pistons and how they kind of want to build this team as far as having younger players um, being featured all over the place. Jamarco Pickett is also a restricted free agent. We won't mention a whole lot about him. Uh, recently, it was announced that Luke, both Luca Garza and Carson Edwards are now, their options were declined. So they're unrestricted free agents. Um, also, Frank Jackson is there as well, and Rodney Magruder um, is also one as well. So there's not really of their own players. There's nobody that I feel like the Pistons need to retain outside of Bagley. And even then, like if they had him walk for any crazy reason, I think that's you know fine. Um, let's talk about extension eligible players: Hamidou Diallo, Kelly Olynyk, Corey Joseph, Frank Jackson, Luke Garza, and Carson Edwards. Um, Diallo, I think they're going to try to keep. Good young player. Uh, Corey Joseph, a little interested why they want to keep him so much. Like He's just an older player and don't really understand the fit there with Detroit, especially when they have young guards they're going to want to play, like Killian Hayes, obviously Kate Cunningham, and now re most recently Jay Nivey. So we'll see exactly what his future looks like with the team. Olenek is a player who I think they could just move and get a serviceable piece back because I think Olenek can be a good player on a good team. Uh, role player for sure uh, on a team that makes the playoffs. So I think that's, uh, you know, my personal opinion of what I see from this team. Outside of that, they don't really have anything crazy as far as trade, um, tradable players or tradable contracts. Um, it is really just, you know, that's it. Is there a move that can be made where they can maybe move, let's say, Olenek and Isaiah Stewart? Is there a move where they move Kemba again? Is there a play where they can say, okay, let's move Corey Joseph and somebody else to somewhere? They're a little bit limited in that regard. However, where they're not limited is in restricted free agency. So let's uh, let's talk about that as we've kind of seen the uh, the cap sheet here for the Pistons. Um, looks good. Ultimately, like they they have cap space. And this is the time to be able to use your cat space when you're paying Ivy a little bit amount. Same with Duran and same with Kate Cunningham. So let's see. Uh, let's see. What we can get pulled up here for the Pistons. Olenek's going to be that big trade piece. Um, they really just need anything, and they need it offensively, in my opinion. Um, Ivy is a good fit with Cunningham. I don't think he's like the greatest fit ever, but I do think he's a good pick. Um, Duran, I think him and Cunningham will be really solid together. So we'll get to watch that. And I'm really excited for the summer league to see just Ivy and Duran play. Um, as far as qualifying offers or extensions for Marvin Bagley, um, I'm excited to see what happens there. Cause I think there's going to be some depth, some big man depth in Detroit, which will be interesting, but let's talk about who they could get in restricted free agency. DeAndre Ayton has been a name that everybody's talked about. Miles Bridges, Jalen Brunson, um, and Colin Sexton. So these are guys that I think are going to be of interest to the Pistons. The Ayton one has kind of cooled off now because they just recently drafted Duran. That doesn't mean that they won't, but I just don't know <laughs> exactly if they'll still do that. Miles Bridges is actually somebody who I think is really interesting forward out of Charlotte. I think he's a dude who can come in, provide some offense, um, and be a good player for Cade Cunningham and Ivy and Duran. I think just just imagining those four together, like running in transition, is 
crazy to me to think about. Um, so that will be somebody that I think that the Pistons can try to get. Or do they wait? Do they hold their chips and say, we're going to hold off and wait until we have a little bit more cap space? The only risk of doing that is just, again, you want to be able to get higher salary players while your young players are still on their rookie deals. So we'll see what Detroit does there. Really interesting. Um, I think they will be a team that probably makes some moves. I hope they don't make a Kelly Olynyk move where it's just like you're a rebuilding team. You don't need this guy who's probably a really good role player on a good team. I don't like they shouldn't make a move like that. But if they can get a young player, I think DeAndre Ayton before the Duran trade, I think Ayton works pretty good with this team. But ultimately, um, I think that the Pistons, they can make some moves. Maybe it's a trade, uh, whatever it may be. Pistons will be a really interesting team to watch this upcoming offseason. But let me know what you feel like in the comment section. Do you think that they are, is there a player that you want to see the Pistons get? Is there a trade that you want them to make? Whatever it is, let me know in the comment section. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the other 29 videos for the other teams in the NBA that we're doing off-season previews for, and we'll catch you in the next video. Before the video ends, the Detroit Pistons and the New York Knicks made a trade. Before the video ends, the Detroit Pistons and the New York Knicks made a trade um, during recording of those Knicks and Pistons videos. So I'm going to go back here and just add this little video towards the end of this <clears throat> of the respective videos for those two teams and just really quickly talk about what that means for each side. Um, the Knicks trading Nerlens Noel, here it is on screen, to, and Alec Burks to the Detroit Pistons. Um, the, the Pistons are basically just bringing in the cap space. And it's kind of questionable, in my personal opinion, um, like why the why like the Nets or excuse me, not the Nets, but the Pistons would do this because obviously this 19 million roughly that they're getting from the Knicks, it could have been used elsewhere. Um, now it seems as if they're not going to make a restricted uh, free agent offer, like an offer sheet to DeAndre Ayton or to Miles Bridges. So I just kind of am wondering exactly what the deal is there. If anyone wants to clear that up for me, feel free to do that. Um, for, the, for the Knicks, this is all about Jalen Brunson. The Knicks video was really focused in on Jalen Brunson and like what he means for them. Um, and I think that, again, this is to clear up that space. Whether it's a good move on them or not to go and try to make this move for Brunson is yet to be determined, but he's going to be paid a lot. And personally, I don't know if he's worth all that, uh, but it is... Uh, highly likely that the Knicks are going to acquire Brunson and that the Mavericks won't match the offer sheet that the Knicks are about.